This four-part video will teach you how to clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words and phrases. Use the timestamps in the description if you would prefer to watch a specific section. Part 1. Using Context Clues Context clues refer to using the words and phrases around an unknown word to figure out what it means. Now, where context clues, you may ask. They're like little hints that the author gives us in a sentence or paragraph to help us figure out what a word means. Imagine you're playing a game of guess who, but with words instead of people. Let's check out some examples. The sun was scorching and Sarah felt parched as she walked through the desert. What does parched mean? Well, we know that it's something Sarah felt because it says, Sarah felt parched. We also know that it was really hot because the sun was scorching. So, we can use the context clues to figure out that parched means very thirsty. The detective searched for clues to solve the mystery. What does detective mean? We know that the detective is someone who is trying to solve a mystery because it says searched for clues to solve the mystery. So, a detective is someone who investigates and tries to solve crimes. The athlete's jubilant cheers could be heard from blocks away. What does jubilant mean? We know that the athlete was cheering because it says cheers. We also know that their cheers were really loud because they could be heard from blocks away. So, jubilant must mean really happy and excited. The teacher's monotonous voice put the students to sleep. What does monotonous mean? We know that the teacher's voice made the students fall asleep because it says, put the students to sleep. So, monotonous must mean boring and dull. So, there you have it. Context clues are like little detectives that help us figure out what words mean. Just look at the surrounding words and sentences to get a hint. Part 2. Using Greek or Latin Roots Greek and Latin are ancient languages that have influenced many of the words we use today. If you know some common Greek and Latin roots, you can figure out what many words mean just by looking at them. Today, we're going to learn how to use common Greek or Latin roots to help us figure out the meaning of a word. Now, what are roots, you may ask? Well, they're like the building blocks of words, and they can help us understand what a word means. For example, the word audience has the Latin root audi, which means to hear. Let's check out some more examples. The dentist gave me a prescription for antibiotics. What does antibiotics mean? We can break down the word and see that it has the Greek root anti, which means against, and the word biotic, which refers to living things. So, antibiotics must mean something that is against living things, like bacteria or viruses. The motorcycle rider wore a helmet to protect his cranium. What does cranium mean? We can see that it has the Greek root cron, kara, which means skull. So, cranium must refer to the skull or the bony part of our head that protects our brain. In a democracy, everyone has the right to vote and participate in making important decisions for their community. Democracy is made up of two Greek roots, demos, which means people, and kratos, which means power or rule. So democracy means ruled by the people. The building's exterior was covered in ivy. What does exterior mean? We can see that it has the comparative form of the Latin word prefix exter, which means outer. So the word exterior means on the outside. So, there you have it. By breaking down words into their roots, we can unlock their true meanings. Keep an eye out for those common Greek and Latin roots, and you'll be a master at figuring out new words in no time. Part 3. Using Reference Materials Let's explore a very important topic. How to consult reference materials like dictionaries, glossaries, and thesauruses to find the pronunciation of a word or determine its precise meaning or part of speech. But don't worry, we'll make it fun! Let's start with the pronunciation of a word. Have you ever had trouble saying a word out loud? Maybe it was a big, long word like pneumonultramicroscopic silicovolcaniconiosis. Yes, that's a real word. Don't worry, you're not alone. The good news is that dictionaries can help you with that. If you have a print dictionary, you can usually find the pronunciation of a word by looking at the phonetic symbols next to it. 
These symbols represent the sounds of the word, so all you have to do is say them out loud. For example, if you look up the word butterfly in a print dictionary, you'll see something like this. The phonetic symbols show you how to say the word. It might look a little weird at first, but with a little practice, you'll be saying tricky words like pneumon ultramicroscopic silicovolcaniconiosis in no time. Now, let's talk about finding the precise meaning of a word. Have you ever come across a word that you didn't know the meaning of? Maybe it was in a book you were reading or a conversation you were having with someone. Again, don't worry, you're not alone. It happens to the best of us. When you come across a word you don't know, the first thing you can do is look it up in a dictionary. Dictionaries will give you the definition of the word, which is basically what it means. For example, if you look up the word conundrum in a dictionary, you'll see something like this. So, now you know that a conundrum is a difficult problem or question. Easy peasy. Finally, let's talk about determining the part of speech of a word. This might sound a little complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Every word in the English language belongs to a certain part of speech, like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Knowing the part of speech of a word can help you understand how it's used in a sentence. If you look up a word in a dictionary, you'll usually see its part of speech listed next to it. For example, if you look up the word teacher in a dictionary, you'll see something like this. So, now you know that teacher is a noun, which means it's a word that describes something such as a person, a thing, an animal, a place, or idea. So there you have it. Now you know how to consult reference materials like dictionaries, glossaries, and thesauruses to find the pronunciation of a word or determine its precise meaning or part of speech. Remember, when in doubt, look it up. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it. After all, even the smartest people need a little help sometimes. Part 4. Verifying the Meaning Let's look at how to verify the preliminary determination of the meaning of a word or phrase. Don't worry, it's not as complicated as it sounds, and we'll make it fun. So, let's say you've come across a new word or phrase that you don't know the meaning of, and you've already made a preliminary determination by checking a dictionary or using context clues. Now you want to make sure that you've got it right. How can you do that? Let's find out. One way to verify the meaning of a word or phrase is to look for more clues in the context it appears in. Sometimes, the words that come before or after the new word can give you a better idea of what it means. For example, the new student was quite precocious. She was already reading at a high school level in the third grade. From the context, you might guess that precocious means something like smart or advanced. But to be sure, you can look up the definition in a dictionary to confirm it. Another way to verify the meaning of a word or phrase is to check it in a thesaurus. A thesaurus can give you synonyms and antonyms that might help you understand the meaning better. For example, the party was raucous, with loud music and people shouting over each other. You might infer that raucous means loud or disorderly. To confirm your guess, you can look it up in a thesaurus and find that raucous is a synonym of boisterous and noisy. Finally, you can also verify the meaning of a word or phrase by checking multiple dictionary definitions. Sometimes, a word can have multiple meanings depending on the context, and it's important to make sure you've got the right one. For example, the scientist conducted an extensive investigation to uncover the mystery of the missing artifact. You might guess that investigation means search or examination. But to be sure, you can check multiple dictionary definitions to see that it can also mean a formal inquiry or a systematic search for facts. So there you have it. You now know how to verify the preliminary determination of the meaning of a word or phrase by checking the context, a thesaurus, or multiple dictionary definitions. Remember, it's always important to double-check your work and make sure you've got it right. And who knows, you might just learn some new words along the way.